Has any, ha, anyone in here been to a TAG meeting, a, a technical advisory group meeting, whether it was for network or just any of the... Oh, very good, very good. Uh, well, we're going to talk about why the thing was formed, what, we're, what we attempt to accomplish, maybe some things that we have accomplished, some projects that call TAG network home-based, if you will. Um, and then we're going to have some discussions about what, what do we want to do next and quite directly, that depends on you, probably more than it does me. So, well, good. <laughs> uh, just going to self-critique how terrible these slides are. Uh, hey, so so you know, in the spirit of the CNCF. Um, we're not, you know, Tag Network isn't here to uh, make one, to, to uh, dictate the way forward or make one project look better than the next or to uh, not support projects that want to come into the CNCF or those that are already in the CNCF. We, we intend to do just that. We want to provide uh, a vendor neutral space for exploring um, innovative things in the land of cloud native. Um, specifically with respect to network. And that's a big old word. Uh, it means different things to different folks. For those of you who were here on Tuesday, I think it meant DNS, right? Like the wireless didn't work, so yeah. Uh, we're gonna talk about a proposed working group uh, toward the end of the discussion and how that has to do with uh, how networking spans quite a few things. So, so we're here to help um, clarify and inform um, part of that means putting out uh, uh, white papers, uh, our blogs, um, helping people uh, I don't know, navigate their way through virtual network upon virtual network, uh, you know, navigate this ecosystem with respect to networking. Um, and so we've done that. We, uh, some of the participants in the working group have put out, uh, oh gosh, what's that? What's that? IEEE I put out a paper or two there. Um, we haven't done too many blogs. We need to. We put out some white papers. My goodness, if I think back over the, it's been, I'm not sure, seven years. It's been a long time. Um, so, the, yeah. So, the, the, this particular group has done um, not all the things that a tag can do, um, but but quite a few. These are uh, some of the folks that are involved um, in the the leadership of Tag Network. And that changes uh, over time. That changes as and when folks like you show up and start to say something and start to influence it. And if you keep doing it consistently enough, you sort of find yourself uh, with your picture up here. So um, Mr. Jackson is, we just had heart surgery, actually. So he's, he's in recovery. Uh, Mr. Butcher is here at the conference. He is tied down with, in customer, meet, customer meetings today. So he sends his love. And uh, Mr. Zoop is uh, based in China, and so he's, he's not at the conference. So, A quick review. This only goes back X number of years. These are the projects that call Tag Network home base. I hope I didn't miss any. There are some that are proposed to enter into the CNCF uh, that perhaps aren't listed here. Feel free to flame me on Twitter if I've missed one. Or, uh, uh, and so, see, these are some, some of the latest. So, um, LoxyLB, I think I saw a, oh, a booth for that project out on the floor. Do, do, do any of these um, ring a bell for any of you? Are any of these projects that you represent? Maybe projects that you, oh, very good, very good. And projects maybe that you use or just uh, have a hankering for? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, good. We are in need of, like with respect to these projects, we're in need of um, helping them, I think, more than we do. There's a, we've got a, a prominent venue, um, like this discussion right here. This is a venue in which some of you I, I don't know, or many of you I don't know. And uh, if we were to have project representatives up here and we were, had a particular discussion on, on a topic, that might be quite helpful. That might be a good thing to do. We've got We've got those types of resources to offer up to projects, and I don't know that we, I would, I would not rate us as doing very well 
for encouraging those projects to step forward and take advantage of some of those resources like, like this. And so if you represent a project, whether you're formally representing one as a maintainer or you're just enthusiastic about one, like the sense that I'm trying to convey to each of you is that there, we, the, this particular tag could be a lot more busy. In the past, it has been a lot more busy. And so there is, there's room for you all to influence this. Good. That's part of what we do is, is uh, review projects that come through, help them, you know, help them through the different phases. One of, the things that, like, one of the things that we've had in the past that's been real active is a service mesh working group. Um, that group is recently proposed to change its focus a bit uh, and be an ontology working group, which is to say, let me see if I can capture this um, a bit. Well, there are standard definitions if you go out to the internet and look up, like, what, what is a book? And what are all the attributes, the metadata about a book? Um, there's the various properties, author and publish date and publisher and et cetera. And there are uh, established for, uh, standards for like characterizing a particular noun like that. In Kubernetes land, there's perhaps, um, there's the KRM, is it the Kubernetes resource model. There are custom resource definitions. There are Kubernetes standard resources. Um, each of these, if you go look at a, a Kubernetes resource or a custom resource, same thing. A lot of times there, it's a noun, not always, but a noun with many different properties. And so those are specified in a similar way in and amongst, you know, with, with, under the Kubernetes extensible API umbrella. Right? How each of those resources, maybe a Kubernetes pod and a Kubernetes uh, service, how they relate to one another, that's not necessarily, or that isn't explicitly defined within each resource. That's left a little bit to, well, it's done in different ways, but it's left to interpretation depending upon different, in, to, to kind of follow on that example, if you have a, a Kubernetes um, deployment and a Kubernetes service, a lot of times if you want to interrelate those two, oh, you might use um, match labels. You might annotate them in a similar way so that Kubernetes understands that this service is meant to front this deployment and they relate in this way. If you think about, I'm not sure what the count is, but in terms of, well, for standard resources, I think it's 70-ish something standard resources that you might find that kind of come are vanilla sort of standard Kubernetes resources. Um, if you take a look at all of the custom resources across the vast ecosystem, it's, it's many thousands, many thousands of custom components. Ma you know, many projects have, or many software, or many, many software infrastructure or infrastructure projects have created uh, operators uh, to help integrate with Kubernetes. And as they do, a lot of times they'll create cu um, custom resource definitions, CRDs. And so there's a lot of them. <clears throat> and comprehending, like having a, a language that describes, or just a, a YAML format or what have you, that, that like programmatically, well, that describes how these components interrelate. That's, that's the objective of what um, this proposed working group is, is to focus on. And so, um, good. So, so, if that challenge interests you, hey, this, this particular working group might interest you. Great time to get involved because um, of what I've just expressed, that's a, there's, a, there's a doc that uh, proposes a, a little bit more than what I just expressed, but that's the gist of it. Um, it won't necessarily go too far unless uh, folks get involved. So it's a great time to come influence it, come influence the heck out of it. Um, for, you know, like I was saying before, a large part of what um, each um, tag does so for tag network, it depends upon who, who's involved. There's a, we have, sure, we have a, a, a remit and a charter and some objectives, but you know, it, it's all volunteers. And so 
what we actually get done depends upon the interest of those that come in and, 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 and what, what we accomplish. Uh, I say that in, not only because I've said it three times now, but in part because uh, for myself, uh, Lee, I, I end up spending a lot of my time focused on, well, the ninth highest velocity project in the CNCF, uh, Meshery. Meshery is a, um, it ends up taking a lot of my focus. And um, I mention it because Meshery is, is attempting to tackle this particular problem. And so it proposes a specific uh, relationships uh, format, a specific way to characterize the, um, how two components would interrelate. So, and, and so that's part of uh, what's inside. So, as a living example, hey, in part, it's proposed that, that we might use the use or embellish or the relationship schema from Meshery, in part because Lee's involved, and so that has an influence. Come influence. Good. Um, there are other things to, this is, this is the part of the talk where we start to do that dialogue. So, <clears throat> There are a couple of other slides to go through that might tease out some ideas, tease out some discussions, tease out some things that you all might want to do. Uh, <clears throat> before, we, before we go into that, I'll say, hey, come participate. So we meet twice a week, I'm sorry, twice a month. Um, here's where you go for that. You can get a heads up about upcoming projects and which ones are being proposed and what they're doing and how they're different from other projects. Um, particularly those that might overlap. So if there are X number of load balancers that are within the CNCF, how are they different? That might make for a good discussion um, from those maintainers up here. But as each project gets proposed and we review them, that's one of the questions that we ask. It's totally fine that there's overlap, uh, it's, um, but it's good to um, articulate that and understand it. Anyway, come participate. Uh, the service mesh working group that I had just alluded to, that I had said is being proposed to evolve into this ontology working group, one of its charters, one of the things it was looking to get done is, well, it is <clears throat> to do one of the things that Tag Network is supposed to do, and that is help people understand um, th this ecosystem, some of the best practices of maybe running cloud native networks or running cloud native um, infrastructure, and promoting or suggesting patterns that are reusable. Uh, and again, there's been, um, there's been a, a small catalog of those designs that have been um, put forth. Uh, that catalog needs help or needs more patterns published in there. This particular part of the, the Service Mesh Working Group initiative d does have to, a bit to do with Meshery as well. Um, Meshery helps um, orchestrate infrastructure, helps you conf configure the infrastructure. And so it has a catalog full of patterns. Any of you are welcome to publish a pattern in there. So that's kind of, that's a that's part of the prior focus. There's a meshery.io slash catalog. Another part of the working group's prior focus, the service mesh working group, is a project called Nighthawk. So it's a load generator. Um, Nighthawk uh, right now sort of resides most closely or sits adjacent to Envoy. It was sort of created as part of the Envoy project. So load generator um, that gets really specific about how it is that it uh, measures the uh, throughput of traffic, uh, throughput against the system under test, uh, and, the, um, and, and it performs some statistical analysis about the um, how quickly that tra those requests are returned. So, so that's what Nighthawk has been about. That's kind of an example of things that the group has worked on. There's um, a specification project called Service Mesh Performance. It's just a, a spec, but it is, um, we've had, that project has had some help from folks at Intel who've helped define a mesh mark, like a formula for Oh, giving a simple score to how it is that you're running your infrastructure, like in context of the value that that infrastructure provides. So the cost of running the infrastructure in context of the value that it's providing to you, however you want to measure that, um, 
is you run through a formula and you create your um, mesh mark score. So these are just these are examples of things that have been um, the fruit of working groups within Tag Network. So the Service Mesh Working Group. So um, there's a particular formula. We don't have to dive through each of the. Good, okay. So, how else does Lee facilitate dialogue and discussion? Yes, sir. To, uh, uh, to just to give the helpers to understand uh, how Tag reports into the whole PMCS uh, charter. Uh, you know, if you have to draw a chart and the tweet, where does Tag fit in that? Yeah. So, <clears throat> that's a very good question. I, I'm going to repeat it for all of the rest of us and those that might suffer through watching this recording later. Uh, it might be helpful if I were to bring up the CNCF landscape, um, just sort of as a visual for understanding kind of the, at least from a project perspective, um, Tag Network's remit. So l.cncf.io, landscape.cncf.io. There is When this comes up, there's a filter in here. There should be for uh, filtering out and looking at projects just by, by tag. What time is it? If I can, uh, yeah. So hey, it's hey, it's right in the middle. Here's one view. Oh boy. Well, it's not gonna. Here's sort of an alternative view of um, the scope or the categories of maybe where Tag Network um, has its focus. Uh, sorry, I, did I even repeat the question? The question was, um, hey, in context of the overall CNCF, um, where is, how, what's just organizationally and sort of scope of responsibility, where does Tag Network sit and how does that contrast against maybe other tags? Um, and so in part that can be described by or characterized by the projects that have, you know, that, that are within you know, tag network, and that's that's kind of what this speaks to. Um, there are a, a host of other um, tags; those were listed here. It's um, where where one tag ends and the other one picks up is often not necessary. There's a if you've been, Envision like a Venn diagram is a little bit difficult sometimes, especially with a particular project. Uh, for the project to describe itself wholly as you know fitting into very clearly just application space versus like well some network things that it does for purposes of application and then and, and like and so it's uh, it's not always entirely clear kind of where what home base should be for a particular project. Um, each of the some of the tags like tag security have maybe an ongoing um, service that they provide to projects. So um, one of the services that they do or that they facilitate is a security assessment of the, uh, of the projects themselves. So one of the things that we've proposed with Tag Network is like, well, hey, it, for criteria, as a project enters into the CNCF, there's a three levels, the sandbox and the incubating and, and graduate, is that um, you know, with each successive level, there's a little more strict requirements about the maturity level of the project. And so one of those things is, well, hey, from the perspective of each tag, what, what does each tag suggest that suggest is a uh, maturity level? And so the notion that I was just talking about Nighthawk and its load generation um, capability and, and it assessing the performance maybe of, of projects that expose a service or that expose an API, that one of the suggestions has been um, for Tag Network to provide a service to um, do, do to establish a baseline for performance of the um, network-based interfaces that a given project has. To do that at its sandbox level, and and then to continue to do it as it goes moves through graduation phases, and so th that helps characterize a little bit of like the. The, the, you know, the charter of the, like, 
There's a, a current proposed white paper on disaster recovery and ta TAG Network helping facilitate that and, and what, what do things look like from a network-centric perspective? So if that gives you some, you know, some sense of it. Yes, sir. You say the name of the project one more time? Uh, Resilience. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a good question. Yeah, to, to, I don't know that that microphone is doing a good job of picking up the, you know, that it's on, but to recap the question is, hey, um, hey so, so what's your name? Uh, David. David, yeah, very. So, so David, David was just saying, hey, I spend a lot of time with Cilium, and, you know, it's a graduated project, and, you know, uh, what we've been discussing today is you, there are, certainly we have graduated projects listed in the, the slide that we had up earlier, but there's, you know, a fair bit of discussion around Sandbox and others. And so, and it becomes evident that uh, some of what's been discussed is helpful for Sandbox projects, but how does TAG Network um, help with graduated projects? Moreover, um, in, in light of Kubernetes SIG Network, which, um, you know, helps advance networking in around, you know, in around this ecosystem to a great deal as well. Um, how do the two, you know, correspond? And, um, maybe I'll give a, so, so one example of, hmm, you know, one example that hopefully is a good one is there used to be a specification called Service Mesh Interface, SMI. And, uh, and that was intended to be oh, like a, a uniform um, a uniform set of resources, a uniform set of API descriptions for um, getting at service mesh functionality, irrespective of what particular service mesh you're using, what particular implementation. And so that project had um, gone on for some time, and, and, and through its evolution, and through the discussions within um, Kubernetes SIG network, um, that project had been, has, is now archived, SMI, and is... Uh, some of its ideas are intentionally and, and through discussion with TAG Network and, and folks that are involved, um, those are reincarnate in the Network API. Uh, what is it? Network, network Gateway API? I'm not. Let's say it one more time. CNI. It, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's CNI, but then... Yeah, the Gateway API. Yeah, that's probably what I'm, what I'm trying to... And so... That's sort of an example of like how the two have um, married up and some of the same individuals that spend time between both of them have helped, um, yeah, help the ecosystem evolve. There's more that we, like written into the charter is, is the idea that we would be in a routine, like routinely inviting those from um, Kubernetes SIG networking to uh, come and help disseminate some of the latest happenings within um, SIG network, and uh, yeah, actually the names have become you know quite confusing. That's in part why tag network is or tags are called tags and not you know, something else. Um, does that touch on like? Oh no! Uh, so and the question is, hey, does SIG, does Kubernetes SIG network report to um, CNCF tag network? Yeah. Um, they don't. Um, it could, uh, if there were folks that were, like, it's kind of funny, in the, in the, the written letter of the, the law, no, they don't. Um, if there were um, quite influential folks involved in TAG Network, and there certainly have been, and they're spending enough time, like, there are pressures that, um, with the CNCF hat on, in general, that, that there were questions that could be asked or, or like pressures is probably the wrong word, but like questions and clarifications that the CNCF as a neutral or the tag network within a, the CNCF as a neutral body can help facilitate. Mm -hmm. um, and through just shining a light on various topics, we can help people work through those. There have been a number of contentious moments over the years or between different projects. And, and so, yeah, if that, okay, thank yeah. You. yeah, good, good questions.
Hi, so, oh, this mic is on. Um, so I'm Justin Kapos, I'm the tech lead in TAG Security, and I actually lead the assessment uh, process that you talked about that TAG Security does. Um, I think if you do a process kind of like that, so my first reaction when you said it is that's awesome, because that's exactly what an adopter is going to want, or something like that is information about like what's the throughput, what load, what kind of, you know, um, what's my 99% behavior in certain cases and stuff like that. Um, one thing that we've struggled with that maybe you all have better ideas about how to address in a good way is um, the quality level of the things brought to us as that first step is highly variable. And in fact, a lot of groups don't want to do that work uh, to, to put that effort in. Um, and I'll also say from my perspective, there's a dirty little secret with projects, which is that I think many projects do fit reasonably well into different tags. And there is a little bit of tag shopping when it comes to deciding to move from level A to, you know, from sandbox to incubation or incubation to graduation, or even just get into CNCF in the first place. Um, and so we've, we've seen a little bit of that as well, where a group is like, well, we want to do stuff with tag security because we're a security project. And it's like, oh, well, we have to do an assessment. Mm, maybe we'll come back to you later, but we'll go to another tag for now. I'm, I'm with you. Um, <laughs> um, to your, to, in part, to the, your first point about services that tags offer to um, to projects and how that can be refreshing, and also on the other side of the coin, um, um, just more work uh, yeah. is like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who wants to be told that their project doesn't perform well, that their APIs don't perform well, or that um, what the code that they've written is highly insecure and is just ready, for, you know, ripe for, you know, attack? Yeah. And the other thing is, is that you'll get a situation where uh, organization X has a benchmark that they gave you that says their performance is like out of this world. It's like unbelievably good, and no one else has been able to replicate that. And then the other people who, who come in don't want their project to look worse. And there's going to be, like, I can totally foresee things like that happening because we've had things on a lesser scale that are less quantifiable. Yeah, I, thanks, thanks for this. this um, here's here's a, a thought alongside what you, you're articulating. Oh, that like, looks awesome. Th there's a, th that service mesh performance project, um, part of what it, is it t has attempted to do is just, is just inform folks and do it in a uniform way. Uh, it, so to the extent that projects were to come through and get a security assessment or get a perf uh, network performance assessment, that um, if they're, if, perhaps if they're aware that like, hey, it's a standard procedure, one. Uh, two, that uh, like uh, certainly for sandbox entrance, that like there, there isn't, the requirement is just to baseline yourself, not that you have to hit a certain, uh, you know, a certain score. Perhaps as time goes on and as the talk, the TOC were to you know, become more comfortable or, or want to enforce those that they might. Um, but so I bring this up and I don't know if it's going to load, uh, but it is very, uh, various um, test configurations that different, in this case, service meshes are, are deployed into and then tests run and baselines tracked. And so, um, yeah, it would seem like maybe one of the ways to appease those projects and to get them to be okay with an assessment or to like pony up some, some work around um, improving the security posture of their um, project is if it's made you know, low pressure or like, um, and, I, and I don't know, and this is just me thinking aloud with you, but like to the extent that some of the, the security assessments um, can be done in, uh, with, with lower effort or we, just some we, static analysis? Yeah, we, we had, um, I, I had a hundred and something students in my security class go and do assessments for 28 projects. 
to do that like low effort. But and one last thing before I leave is I think one of the most valuable things from a tag for those of you who are thinking about like, do I want to come be a part of this? It's is if the tag can get experts from these other communities to come in and just talk about their war stories, about what they found or what they're encountering now or how they're addressing this. And you build those connections. So when you have some, gosh, you know, we're seeing these weird performance blips or we're seeing like this, this weird like loss patterns or whatever else, someone else can be like, aha, we ran into that. Did you look at this buffer here or did you do that? So. Thank you for that. It's a great point about uh, yeah, end users coming in and like, like, hey, it isn't just about those that are creating it, but there's so much value in that exchange, um, not only in the moment of what they're sharing, but then to your point on an ongoing basis, the fact that they know that there might be folks to go um, reach out to. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, my name is Girish. I'm um, one of the maintainers of OVN Kubernetes. Uh, that project did uh, show up on your uh, slide for uh, North America 2024. So we got accepted as a sandbox project this year. Um, I would like to understand, at the beginning of the talk you said uh, this particular track is an opportunity for various projects to come on stage alongside with TAG and then leverage uh, the slot, right? Uh, like what are the ways in which the projects, like, like OVN Kubernetes is the one over there. So what are the ways in which we can take this opportunity to be on stage along with the tag uh, chair and co-chair and, and then others, and then kind of present uh, 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 the project's latest stuff or? Yeah, re relatively, great question. Thanks for asking, that's exactly what I was hoping. Um, hey, hey, request accepted right right here, right now. Or like, that's one way. Um, the other way is like, hey, we meet twice a month, and so uh, drop in a, an agenda item and with a, a small topic proposal. And I think you'll find an overwhelmingly the response being quite, you know, yes, quite positive. Like, um, we, like we, okay. that's about it. Like, I, don't, I, I shouldn't say anything else because it's about that simple. Like, we should do that. Let's do that. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I noticed uh, on your website, the L.CNCF, like Nighthawk isn't on there yet, so it must be a newer newer projects that's getting sandboxed. And, and my question kind of uh, with, with the security tag when we were, talk, we were talking about that, is there um, certain specifications or levels for, hey, we have this project and, and in order to reach, sand, to even be a sandbox, you have to meet a certain level. And then it goes on to graduated and all that. Like, like there's pretty defined benchmarks you have to meet. Both sides or? Uh, I'll say just something real quick. In general, our role, we see it as to advise the TOC about projects, not to decide. And so um, we've had projects where we've said like, look, there's a whole bunch of bad things from a security posture standpoint here. And the TOC is like, yep, but it's widely used and whatever else. And we think it's ready to move levels. And they say they're going to address these things and stuff like that. So um, I think that's closer to the model, but we often maybe expect more information from them so we can make our, like our recommendation to the TOC, and that might be different by the level. So a sandbox project might do something on their own, whereas a graduated project, we would definitely do like a joint assessment where we would, security experts would go through them with what they've done and say, look, these are things we think are a big concern. Um, that's just our model, and I, I'm sorry for. That's exact. Thank you very much, Justin. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have 15 more seconds, I think. Um, <laughs> to, to try to. I, I can be. I was just going to say, yeah. I, this is my first cloud native con, and and I'm just getting started with all this, and it does feel like it's the project with the most GitHub stars and and all that stuff. But but I assume there's more to it than just yeah. that. So yeah, thanks. yeah. There really. Yeah. The, yep. And to your point, to your direct question, there are pre-established sets of questions to be answered and sort of expectations at each level. And as the project matures, part of that is like a, a adoption. Is the project being used? And are there adopters willing to go through an interview, interview process to speak to how it is that they use the project? And so um, I'll, I'll get you a link because yeah, it's great. 
Very good. Hey, we're, we're out of time. I only tossed in a couple of bad jokes this time. So, you know, you guys are lucky. Thanks a bunch for coming. I'll be around if you want to um, catch up. So.